Hello and welcome back to Mersey Beat Gardening and uh, welcome back to the plot. Um, it's the first week, it's the 4th of November. Um, so I thought I'd do a little plot update. Um, uh, we haven't been down for a good few weeks because of work commitments. So I thought you'd like to see what we've been up to on the old plot. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, take you around and I'll do a little voiceover for you. So um, let's have a look. Okay, we'll take a walk around the um, perimeter of our plot. Um, Cosmos has been uh, blown over in the wind here. Um, the plot actually um, is, follows the lines of the original wartime um, allotments uh, when Hartill was known as um, the wartime allotments 1939 um, and this was the um, amount of space that the um, Department of Food um, said that would feed um, a family of four approximately this size of plot. It's measured, measured in rods and poles and so, oh, these are some of seed seedlings that were um, were planting out some uh, winter greens, um, mustards, and um, mitsuna, um, um, lamb's lettuce, various things like that. They're going to go in the greenhouse, and we clear the greenhouse. And we've also got some gourds here that Catherine started to to harvest. Uh, we'll talk about that later. And. <laughs> Yeah, it's we haven't been down for about three weeks, and it's look, looking a bit untidy. Things are blown over. But it's a good time to assess the plot. There's some repairs that is going to be needed due to the raised beds there, so it's good to have a look around and um, assess what needs doing over winter, because winter is usually a busy period. Now we're coming into the start of our growing season, so uh, we've got gourds draped over the uh, greenhouse there. And in the uh, greenhouse, it's full of pepper, peppers, which need picking, which I'm going to do today. Um, start picking the peppers and clearing uh, the greenhouse. As you can see, um, temperatures are dropping now. It's November, so it's getting down to almost freezing. Um, warm during the day. Uh, the peppers seem to, to relish it. These are demon red. Uh, Thai chili peppers, very tiny, small, but very fiery, feisty little things they are. So I'm going to clear all these out now, and um, uh, I've left it a bit late really in the season, should have been done a few weeks ago. Some tajites, uh, French marigolds still flowering there. We put them in the greenhouse to um, encourage pollinators and discourage aphids. So um, yeah, just stripping the uh, all the fruits off, or the peppers, I should say, off, uh, and you get a surprising amount of peppers. Um, you know, these are all supermarket uh, varieties, by the way. This is where um, we bought some chili peppers from the supermarkets, and we saved the seeds and planted them in the greenhouse, and um, they did well. It was a good good harvest. I'll probably do it again next year. Uh, much better than the tomatoes. The tomatoes didn't do very good in the greenhouse at all. So, so I'll get all these cleared off and then a nice big bag of uh, chilli peppers and sweet peppers mixed bag. So I'll be freezing some of these and um, hopefully um, uh, drying them as well, uh, making them um, chili flakes, stuff like that. Very useful ha a harvest, I'd say, for uh, free, because it didn't cost anything to to get the seeds, obviously. Let's see what's in the curl frame. Um, yep. Yeah. Let's have a look in. There we go. Um, I cleared this um, a few weeks ago and we put in here, we've got a couple of rows of um, chicory growing at the back there, they're the 
reddish purpley things uh, then um, some endives and uh, some uh, green in snow mustard greens so they'll do well over the winter um, these are tomatillos Mexican uh, tomatoes kind of thing uh, ancient variety uh, related to, very much to the tomatoes they, they grow in these paper husks so they need picking now they're, they're about as as good as we're going to get before the frost so we need to pick them and um, uh, uproot the plants clear some land um, and that's what we'll probably be doing for the next few weeks is um, clearing land and getting it ready for for the winter um, we've already started that process here we we've, we've put some um, um, onions in um, two lots of onions here uh, overwintering on onions red onions and um, yeah although that says leeks uh, that's we've re <laughs> we've reconstituted a label our one and only pumpkin Big Max not as big as we thought would it would be mind you it was grown at the back of the greenhouse and these are, are new to us we've never grown these before but these are gourds um, decorative well, we don't plan on eating them as such uh, they're called Ten Commandments and each one is different each plant you get ten seeds in a pack and each plant is different different good but what we're going to do I'll do a separate vlog on these because I think what we're going to do is cure them it takes about 12 months to cure um, but we're going to do something creative with them they're a decorative gourd you know you, you often see them on shop window displays and stuff like that over autumn time a beautiful architectural designs on these each one is is different and unique and as they dry they get more interesting in many ways the colors come out and stuff um, this is Catherine just setting up a uh, a shop for Instagram our Instagram page if you haven't if you don't know you can you can follow us on Instagram so she's just doing a, a little photo shoot of the gourds and pumpkins there which, um, yeah, you should follow us on Instagram. There's some lovely photos up there. But, um, it's developing into a nice little community from um, gardeners. I know a lot of gardening channels on YouTube do that. Uh, Cosmos, I'm going to pick some of these and put them in a vase because they look great as cut flowers. They've been blown over in the wind. So that's it. So as you can see, the plot needs some sorting out. Um, it's a time where we start to, um, to um, get rid of the um, uh, last summer's crops, the end of last summer's crops, obviously the gourds and the, um, uh, the pumpkins that we haven't been able to harvest and so start clearing some land, getting some winter crops in. Um, um, today I'm gonna be getting the um, garlic and um, uh, elephant garlic in um, we've already got the onions in as you can see um, so it's it's about getting the plot ready for winter our winter sowings are starting now so we're getting our winter greens in so we need to clear land for that um, which is really important now I thought I'd, I'd use this opportunity to talk a bit about climate change and how it's affected gardeners now I know this week is the start of COP26 which you may be aware of um, the climate uh, change uh, conference that's happening in Glasgow um, uh, which I mean as, as gardeners we've known that the climate has been changing um, we've been working this plot for about 20 odd years 20 almost 30 years and we can see the change everybody can see the change you know I mean things like tomatoes are becoming impossible to grow in in this climate um, we never used to worry about it years ago we would just stick them in the ground and they'd grow um, tomatoes would grow we'd have old favorites like gardeners delight and stuff like that we never had blight now we're getting blight on a regular basis the seasons are up the wall the seasons are crazy last this year um, that's cold snap in April affected the onions uh, greatly uh, the onion crops were um, uh, 
totally undersized, really ridiculous um, size. I mean, we ended up out of about 100 onions or whatever we sowed, um, we turned, we, they were so small, we, we had to pickle them, you know, and they were like seed potato, uh, seed onions, it was, it was ridiculous. Uh, so we know the climate's getting different. We're, we're growing things now that we couldn't grow years ago. Uh, tomatillos from Mexico, we, we'd never even considered them. Okra, we'd never even considered that years ago. You know, 30 years ago, we wouldn't consider growing stuff like that. But now it's, it's becoming possible to grow these crops. The summers are extreme. Anybody who's been gardening who, who, would, who would tell you any different, well, they're not telling the truth because we know and we can see that things are changing. Things are not the same. Global warming is a real thing. It's not imagined. It's not out of a textbook. It's not out of a university thesis or um, a paper or something like that. It's a real thing. It's really happening. You know, and I think as gardeners, we need to do more. Uh, we need to work with the environment. We need to stop using things like slug pellets that kill things. Not just slugs, but they kill also, damn it, harm, uh, harmful to birds and uh, other wildlife, hedgehogs and stuff like that. We need to stop using that. We need to stop burning. There's no need to burn on allotments. There's no need to light fires and burn stuff. That's, by doing that, you're just adding to, to climate change. We've been working this plot for a long time. We've never burnt anything. We compost everything. You bury it, make a hygge culture bed or um, something like that, you know, but don't burn stuff. You know, that's lazy gardening as far as I'm concerned. You shouldn't have to burn anything. Um, and there's, there's lots more, there's lots of, you know, no dig gardening is great, great for the environment. Um, it, it keeps the, um, the um, integrity of the soil, which is very important. Um, and uh, the, the soil life, I mean, we're, we're coming to realize now how important soil life is in gardening. It's a very important thing. Um, and years ago, we, we never considered that, you know? Truthfully, we didn't, you know? I remember a time when we started this allotment where it was common to see um, carpets covering the site. Carpets that, that included rubber, on the back of them and plastics ingrained in them, you know, in these carpets. And we used to cover them, you know, um, cover the land. It, 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 covering land is, is not good for the environment, you know, having these like uh, desert areas on your plot, you know. Uh, the importance of giving over an area of land on your allotment or in your garden for wildlife, you know. Um, stop, stop tarmacking over things because it's easy, you know, because it's easy. We, we should be growing more stuff, you know. If you walk down any average street, you'll see, uh, you know, um, just tarmac driveways and concreted driveways that add to flooding, you know, the risk of flooding, the, the, the water, flood water has nowhere to go, you know, we need to plant more trees. We need to do all of these things, and gardeners can do this now. They can do it today. We can help the environment this minute, you know. I don't want to sound too preachy. I sound like I'm being a bit too preachy, but I'm not really. I'm just saying this is all common sense, and we all know it. You know, gardeners are really at the forefront of doing this kind of stuff, and it should be at the forefront of our mind when we're planting stuff, you know, and we're, we're trying to... Um, I mean, most gardeners are doing a good, allotment gardeners, people who grow food are doing a good thing just by the fact that they're doing it. It was considered a rebellious act to do gardening, you know, to fight back from uh, like, um, um, you know, paying a fortune for food that had been shipped in from thousands of miles away from the other side of the world and stuff like that. And we wanted an alternative lifestyle that was to do with growing your own and knowing where your food comes from and knowing it's not full of pesticides and stuff like that. It's important. This stuff is really important and it's never more important than it is 
today and I hope that the, the COP26 does have some kind of result you know I think it's this this idea of killing the planet well that's happened before that's happened before uh, billions of years ago um, two natural occurrences through volcanic activity and atmospherics were the um, it was it was no it became known as the boring billion and for a billion years the earth warmed up and no life could survive on earth evolution stopped evolution stalled for a billion years imagine that and if you read the reports on climate change um that's what we're heading towards we're heading towards basically the extinction of all life on planet earth apart from microbes possibly microbes will survive it and in another billion years when everything's been destroyed evolution may start again but that's how long it takes to correct what's going wrong in the world a billion years now you can google that uh, the boring billion in earth's evolution in fact i might put a link at the bottom of this this video so you can you can explore it yourself to see what we what in fact we're facing. So um, just had a bird behind me. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've um, uh, you you get out this winter and and do a bit of gardening. It's even though it's winter, it's not too cold to to do a bit. You know, um, think about the climate. Uh, think about our future. Um, plant for wildlife and not against it right do things that are going to help the environment and not hinder it um, don't use slug pellets don't burn stuff there's no need for it and um, I'll hopefully I'll speak to you in the next vlog if you've enjoyed this video then give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, uh, make a uh, make a comment and and I'll see you hopefully in December with any luck. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.